ahead. Promise. So let's move on. We often see beautiful girls styled poorly during Miss Universe and Miss USA. Like, let make, let's make an example. Last year, Brazil, Albania, even India looked so amazing. But then when they when it came to the all important preliminary competition and even the finals, they were kind of styled poorly. So do you think it cost them the crown? Styling? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, uh, so I always tell girls like an amazing gown or something isn't going to win you the pageant, but a terrible gown can definitely lose you the pageant. Um, you know, an amazing gown is like, is beautiful to look at, but unless you have everything else going with it, you're not going to win the pageant. Mm -hmm. A terrible gown, watching it as a judge, I might've loved you an interview, but I just can't give you a good score or circle your name and gown if it's terrible on you and your styling is terrible. So that will not, and that's a third of the pageant, the swimsuit even got an interview. So then that'll knock you out. So, you know, I think it's tough being risky. Um, you're almost better off playing the safe card uh, unless like, you know, cause if you go risky and half the people don't like it, then you're gonna lose half the votes. So you either have to be risky and know that like everyone is gonna love it, um, or you can just, you have the confidence to pull it off or go middle ground and just play it neutral. Okay. So do you have a particular uh, Miss Universe or Miss USA winner to back up your, uh, your case or example? Someone who um, went risky and her risk paid off. And her risk paid off? Uh, I would say Jennifer Hawkins, my year. Uh -huh. I, oh, yes. So stunning that yeah. I didn't really notice her until she was in gown. Like I didn't really like now she's like a flippant beacon of light. She's so beautiful <laughs> now. But when she was at the pageant, I didn't really notice her that much. Didn't notice her in swimsuit or opening number. But in that gown, it was like, oh, like that's oh. beautiful. And then like, I think that really gave her this beautiful edge. Um, and then I've seen in the past um, dresses that I'm trying to think of one that, you know, the girl tried to be a little too edgy and it just didn't, it pulled her back the other way. And I can't think of any now. Um, I know there's some out there. Among the, among the former Miss Universe title holders lately. Anyone? Demi, Catriona, Zosie. No, they all had gorgeous yeah. gowns. Those are all gorgeous. All right, um, so yeah, it's okay. So uh, I've been watching a lot of your YouTube videos, and so what trends you so apart from styling? What trends would you want to get rid of apart from your hate on tippy tops? <laughs> yeah, the tippy tops. They're so terrible. Um, <laughs> you, I feel like they're going this way, but for the longest time, we wanted girls to stop wearing pageant dresses. It seemed like every time they would step out, it was like, yep, that's a Sherry Hill. Yep, and Sherry Hill makes gorgeous gowns, but they all looked alike. And we were like, we wanted girls to wear something that they would wear on a red carpet, something that was very couture, fashion forward. Um, and I feel like they are starting to go that way now, especially I feel like more at Miss Universe. Um, I think at Miss USA, I could be wrong about this, but I think once they make prelims, everyone has to wear a Sherry Hill dress. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. So they're kind of limited in that sense then. So everyone will, you know, I mean, she does make a variety of dresses, but it's still all made by the same designer. So they have kind of similarities in their looks. Um, but I want people to just really not think pageant dress and think that they're going to the Oscars or they're going to the, um, the Grammys and something more, you know, something you see on a red carpet. All right, all right. Point well taken. So we are, as we all know, we are on IMG era right now in both Miss USA and Miss Universe, where personalities and eloquence are a huge factor in selecting its winner. Looking back, of course, you competed during Trump era. Were there girls during your 2000 universe batch who did not place, but given their attitude? Um, you know, <laughs> I that I kind of think that uh, like personality and all of that mattered back then too. And I say that because um, when I competed at Miss USA, um, my interview was 
way different than what I'd ever heard of a Miss USA to be like in an interview. And I think that helped me. Um, so for example, uh, I knew that I wanted the judges to get to know my personality. And I grew up with three older brothers and um, I have, I feel like I've gotten better now that I have children, but I have this very kind of raw unedited side to me that can be a little crass at times even. And I wanted the judges to see that about me in the interview. And so um, it was only a two minute interview. I had answered, I think two or three questions by now. So I felt like the interview was coming to an end. And they said, what's one thing we'd be surprised to know about you? And I was going to tell them like, oh, like I'm tomboy. I grew up with older brothers, but I feel like every pretty girl in a pageant says that. So instead I went for that, like kind of shock and awe feel. And I, <laughs> they said, uh, they said, what's one thing to be surprised to know about you? And I put my hands on my hips and I went, I'm really a dude. And then the buzzer went off. And I had this moment in my head where I'm like, what the hell did you just, do? you just told the judges you're a dude. And then very quickly I had this inner dialogue with myself where I was like, okay, they have your birth certificate. They know you're not a dude, <laughs> like go with it. So instead of like, <laughs> I'm joking, this is my mind. Instead, I gave him gun fingers like this and I go, leave you thinking on that one. And I walked out of the room, even like this, and they were rolling laughing. And so I got, I remember stepping out of the room and going, holy, like that was incredibly ballsy. But I feel like I left them knowing my personality. And to this day now, like when I, I now judge a pageant, I feel like it's those girls who leave their personality out there and say something that's really unexpected or something that's just um, shows confidence too, that they're not just like something you'd be surprised to know about me is that I graduated top of my class and like something that's just more like brown nosing. Um, and so I feel like that did help me back then as well to just show that personality and that confidence. Um, but I think that now it's that plus they're doing these video packages and they're airing these video packages um, Cause that's what IMG wants, where it shows like this whole background and personality and everything all together. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's personality nowadays, but but your risk paid off because you, you made it all the way to top two <laughs> during your year. So I guess it really paid off. I mean, you really got them really laughing so hard that, okay, 100%, all scores, 100%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so... I, we just have a few more minutes left, 10 minutes more to go. So I'll be, we'll, we just have three more questions. I don't know. So probably I can do it. Um, so given with what you said, what's your take on women placing high, really, really high, like you, at a certain pageant, like you, Miss Universe, and competing in a different pageant system a few years after? This was really, I think this was an uncommon practice back then during your time. So given a chance, would you do it? Had you been competing now, let's say you won first runner up in Miss Universe last year. And then, you know, there's so, as we all know, there's so many pageants right now, apart from Miss Universe. Uh, like, yeah. So would you entertain the thought of competing again after, after placing second in Miss Universe? So it's a really challenging decision because, well, okay. So I've worked with a lot of clients who you know, will have been Miss Teen something, now they're coming back for the Miss. And where most of the fear lies is in not living up to the same level that they reached before. And it, it's a shot to your pride. And, and I hear this often, and, and I was in that boat too, because I had actually competed at Miss America in 2002. Um, so I'd won my state pageant and then went to Miss America, didn't do diddly squat there, but when I came to the USA system now and I'm trying out for Miss Missouri USA for my state pageant, I was so nervous that what if I don't win? And what if I'm a runner up or I don't even make that? And it wasn't so much of how I would feel. It was as though I was letting people down. And so I literally, I had to just kind of put that aside and go, it doesn't like matter. I'm just going to give it my all hundred percent and hopefully I do win. Um, and then, you know, I obviously won, then won Miss USA too. So it was, I did do better, um, but it is a big risk you have to take. And I, I often joke about how I want to compete in the Mrs. pageants. I never, <laughs> I just want to be silly, but I joke about it because I'm like, you know, when else do you have such a drive and a reason to look 
amazing to get your body in such amazing shape because you're going to be on a bikini in a bikini and like four inch heels on stage in front of everyone. So you will be going to the gym. You will not be skipping leg day. Like you will be working out. Um, but there's no way in God's green earth that I, although never say never, because I feel like once you say you won't do something, then you do. But, um, yeah, I, I think it, it takes a lot of, um, a lot of courage to come back and compete again. Yeah, I do agree where you're coming from. It really takes a lot of risk to really do it. Like, you know, really have to develop that mental fortitude. I can beat my previous record. Like, yeah, it, yeah, I, it's like, you know, girls, how girls, how nowadays compete in pageants, they really train like an athlete, like a warrior competing in Olympics or some sort of a gladiator arena that your re mindset is really, you really have to elevate your mindset to something that really makes you think that you can really beat your record, you can really go the distance. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, last question. Um, since I come from the Philippines, and you always say that we are always the best pageant fans in the world, how do you think the Philippines could do better in the succeeding Miss Universe editions? From one powerhouse to another, what else do you want to see? Are we becoming too predictable? No. Oh my gosh. Too predictable. No. <laughs> I'm so glad that I'm seeing Miss Philippines consistently doing amazing lately. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have like a new team that's working with her, <laughs> but the last few years she has been on fire. Um, I mean, Catriona literally was on fire in that dress. That was ridiculous. Um, but, you know, I, no, I think um, whatever is happening there, keep it going because it's just, it's amazing to watch and to witness. Oh, nice. That must be insane. Like the top five at Miss Philippines must be all ridiculous. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, because uh, back, yeah, for both pageant systems now, but now, yeah. Because now the Miss Universe franchise, the Miss Universe Philippines franchise has been given to another group of people. So it has also attracted an, a group of stellar and stunning women from around our country. So yeah, it's gonna be difficult to choose. It's crazy. I mean, I, cause every year at Miss Universe, I'm like, she's so pretty. And then, and then also like, imagine being on stage and having like, Rah! everyone's like cheering for you. <laughs> Because your fans are incredible. It's like, that's just a dream. Because you know why? Um, our, our pageant system is very much like you guys, what you guys have there in the United States. Because here, um, when, once the girls compete in the nationals, they are already trained. They are already polished. When they compete uh, in the nationals or even in the, uh, oh, sorry, when they compete in the province, provincial level, or even in the community level, there's we have community district pageants they already uh they already compete like they're already training for our national so imagine how much more if they compete in the in our national pageants so that's why you get that kind of a reaction of wow they are already polished as ever i mean they're like untouchable <laughs> so do you think yeah. So do you think we have, we could be consistent, we could still maintain our winning streak in the upcoming Miss Universe editions for the next 10 years? <laughs> I think Philippines is like what Texas was back when Guy and, and Rex took, were running it, where they had Miss USA, Miss USA, Miss USA. Like they just kept producing winners. Uh -huh. I think Philippines is the new Texas from the 80s. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Keep winning the title. All right. So, on that note, um, so would you mind? Uh, would you assuming everything? Given all your pageant skill set, Miss Shandy, right now, I'm thinking, how would you feel if MUO would one day offer you to become a state director of Tennessee? <laughs> would you accept it? <laughs> well, we actually applied for directorship of California um, back when Shana Mokler used to. Co uh, be the director of California and then um I don't know if she left before she moved to Las Vegas yeah she was the director of, of California and New York and I don't know if it was taken away from them or how they lost the franchise um 
and it was open. And so we, I submitted a, a, a business proposal with Susie Castillo. This is before we started pageantology. Um, and with Tammy Farrell, who was a former Miss Teen USA, but she had a lot of connections in the fashion world. And we submitted a proposal and it was a beautiful proposal. Um, and we didn't get it and we were so um. disappointed. Um, and then Susie and I had also reached out about another state and I don't remember which one it was. It was a couple of years ago that came up and we just have been overlooked <laughs> with it. <for> whatever. <laughs> really? But I do know that it's a lot of work and you, it's really, you don't get any money from it. So you, it's a passion project. Like it's something that you do because you are so passionate about pageants and the girls. And, um, you know, I felt like that was me. Like that's something that I would love to do is just make it bigger and better and get amazing sponsors. And, um, but nowadays probably no, <laughs> because yeah. I'm so busy with our three kids. We just moved to Tennessee. We have 15 acres of land. We have chickens. I just ordered uh, two miniature donkeys. We're getting cows and horses and I am becoming a farm wife. <laughs> so I just don't have time to, uh, to run a state pageant. I don't think so. But never again, never say never. Yeah, say never. for now, for now, because you have kids. I mean, once your kids start growing yeah. up for sure. You probably true. have more time to entertain that thought. So on that note, thank you so much, Miss Shandy, for, for giving us the pleasure of doing this interview with us. It really means so much to us for you really to take your time out and do this interview with us. We really learned so much from you, from your experience as a pageant contestant. And we certain, certainly look forward to your your pageant videos and commentaries with Miss Susie in the near future. So uh, last question, can you give a message to all your fans and supporters who have still been, you know, following you on social media, 100%. even if you are a, a, a housewife now and the click yes. really domesticated? So my husband the other day was like, because whenever people will uh, post a picture or a little video of me on Instagram, on the stories, and I repost it, and the other day he was like, why are you reposting these things? Because like, you're so far away from the day you wore your Indian costume. <laughs> like <at National. laughs> You're so far away from that. And I said, because these pageant fans, like the fact that they're still remembering me 16 years ago, the fact that they're still posting pictures and videos of me, that's why I will always repost what they do. Like the fans are just incredible and it's actually funny because like hello i'm 42 now so i have so many people that are like oh my gosh you were my first pageant i ever watched when i was you know however old and i'm like oh my god it was your first pageant like that's so <laughs> sad um so you know it was just so long ago so that if i if i still have these fans that are still alive and <laughs> want to post pictures and videos it's just it's it's so heartwarming to know that you know, I still mean something to them. So um, what I have to say to them is just thank you. And I love you all. Like they're every single one of them. I read every message I get. Um, I'm just, I, I love pageant fans. Oh, thank you so much. From, from our country to you right now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Virtual hugs and kisses all the way there in Tennessee. So yes, this ends our interview. Oh, I got I had a wonderful time really connecting with you, Miss Shandy. I hope this won't be the first and last time we'll, we'll talk at this kind of format, assuming this whole pandemic still, you know, continues, yeah. even spills over until next year. So yes, thank you so much, Miss Shandy. It's a pleasure getting to know, to really know you. So stay safe and hydrated. Um, say, said, said my um, high regard to your husband and to the kids, to Finn, to Bodhi, and, and to your little newborn baby. So thank good night you. over there, Miss Shandy. Yes, good night. And thank you so much. It was lovely. Have a good night. Good night. Good night, good night for now. Bye.